Welcome to Shannon's Club TV, the program for all motoring enthusiasts to relive the histories of cars on Australian roads and racetracks. In each episode, we look back on what made our feature car stand out and meet a proud enthusiast. We'll also get the latest news from the Shannon's auctions team. So let's get things rolling with the iconic Holden, which brought European style to the Aussie family sedan, the VB Commodore. The VB Commodore was launched almost exactly 30 years after the Holden 48215 FX. It was to prove the second most important Holden in the company's seven decades of local manufacturing. Disappointingly, that first Commodore was a standout car for negative as well as positive reasons. Outstanding though the concept and many elements of the design was, the Commodore failed to achieve its potential, chiefly through substandard build quality and outdated six-cylinder engines. Ford Australia executives were worried that they had been outmanoeuvred because their forthcoming XD Falcon was bigger and heavier than the Commodore. But they soon turned the tables on GMH by extracting better fuel economy from their more spacious car and promoting a Honda sourced alloy cylinder head from mid 1980. Mark, the XD Falcon was winning points in the showroom, mm. but it was a different story at Bathurst in 1980, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, for a while there, it looked like uh, Dick Johnson was going to give the XD Falcon its debut victory at Bathurst until, of course, he hit the famous rock and it was all over. Now, Brocky won that race in the new VC Commodore, but the original VB Commodore scored, you know, arguably a more important victory the previous year, which I'll get to a little bit later. Prior to the launch of the Commodore, nerves were fraying at Fisherman's Bend. Between the 48215 and the VB, every new Holden had been essentially Australian by design with American influence. Many executives were worried that the public might not be ready for the switch to Europe, and so the Kingswood Premier soldiered on alongside the new car. Even more interesting than the belt and braces decision to continue production of the Kingswood Premier was that the almost Commodore-sized Tirana continued too. Did any other automotive manufacturer in the world offer three broadly comparable models, all with a choice of engine sizes at the same time? The SLE was the star, with its standard 4.2 litre V8 engine automatic transmission, stylish new cast alloy wheels with low profile rubber and luxury equipment. It was little more than half the price of the less plush, slower Rover SD1. The motoring press raved about the Commodore, especially the SLE, but within a few months were forced to acknowledge the car's shortcomings, especially in warranty claims and fuel economy. The six-cylinder engines were revised for the 1980 VC, but the improvements were too little, too late. Mark, Holden clearly had to do something drastic mm. to convince the Australian public that the VB Commodore was a winner. Yeah, they sure did. And they had to drive right around Australia to do it. It's hard to imagine how things could have worked out for the Holden Commodore had it not won the 1979 Repco Round Australia trial. The General's new and unproven sedan famously crushed the competition to finish first, second and third, erasing any doubts about the newcomer's suitability for rugged Aussie roads. The Repco trial was an audacious gamble by GMH, which really put all of its chips on the table. Had the new Commodore failed to conquer such a gruelling 20,000 kilometre ordeal and pull it off with apparent ease, a lack of buyer acceptance could well have proved terminal. George Shepard masterminded the Holden dealer team's meticulously planned attack. His three six-cylinder VB Commodores were superbly prepared and steered by some of the world's best rally drivers. However, the win went to circuit racing star Peter Brock, stung by comments that he was only there as a publicity stunt. He certainly silenced his critics, describing his Repco trial win as the most satisfying victory of his career. John, you know, the day after the Repco trial win, Holden had to boost production rates to meet a big spike in demand for the VB Commodore. You know, I can't think of a better example of the old salesman's you know, saying, 
We win on Sunday, sell on Monday. No, I can't either, Mark. Mm. As a matter of fact, I'd just gone to work for Ford Australia at that <laughs> right. time, and th they were so upset about mm. the failure of the Cortina and the victory of the Commodore. It was really perceived, even by Ford, as a huge as a huge deal for Holden. It really was. It was so credible, wasn't it? I mean, you could have run a thousand laps around a test track or done anything you like, but to go around Australia like that, it was just really sold you on the ruggedness of the car. And of it? course, there were rumours that the cars were you know, oh, yeah. hand-built and all that sort of stuff. But in the end, they got the win, and that's what counted. That was the most important Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Mm. Peter Brock and HDT also blooded the VB Commodore in touring car racing the following year when they dominated the 1980 Australian Touring Car Championship. The transition from Tirana to Commodore resulted in a big loss of engine power, which was offset by big gains in handling and aerodynamics. Brock claimed a perfect score of eight pole positions from eight rounds and wrapped up his third ATCC title before the final event. Although HDT updated to the latest VC Commodore to win the 1980 Bathurst 1000, the original VB model was still well represented on the mountain that year, with a privately entered car shared by Paul Gulson and touring car great Pete Gagan finishing third outright. The VB had a relatively short life in competition, but its famous race and rally victories played a pivotal role in establishing Commodore as an Australian motoring icon. Other great episodes of Shannon's Club TV are available to view anytime on the club website. Yeah, g'day. My name's Rod Hanson, but most people know me as Tiny, and I work at Shannon's Auctions here in Melbourne. So this is a 1979 VB SLE 4.2 litre V8 Commodore. It's a one lady owner from brand new. It was purchased through Alan Mance Holden in Footscray in 1979. This particular car is an SLE, the top of the range of the VB Commodore range. It comes standard with a 4.2 litre V8 engine. You could also option it up with a 5 litre engine. The running gear through all the VB Commodore range wasn't so much different to the HZ range, but the body was completely different. But when this car was released, it created a little bit of controversy with the Holden owners. The last model, the HZ, was a full-size family car, whereas the new VB Commodore was quite small, almost a medium-sized car. It wasn't well received with a lot of the Holden fanatics because they thought they were going to get a smaller car, but in fact, it was a much better car than the previous model. All the SLEs came standard with air conditioning, power steering, with electric windows, and also a unique feature wipers and washers on the headlights. The interior of this olive green car is also olive green and it's velour with shag pole carpet running up across the floors and up to the bottom to the door trims. The VB Commodore also has a little bit of race history with Australia. Peter Brock raced this car around Bathurst. I've actually driven this car. On the road, this car is still very stable drives well with the RTS and it works very well around corners and also in a straight line. Shannon's National Auctions Manager Chris Borobon joins us with the latest market news on the VB Commodore. Welcome Chris. Hi John. Welcome Hello. to the show mate. I think prior to about uh, 2013 if you'd said the VB Commodore would become a collectible classic. I reckon everyone would have laughed at you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nostalgia is a very, very powerful thing. What's going on out there? Yeah, uh, very interesting. I, th mm. I think we're, uh, you know, there's some interest coming out uh, in those 80s cars, and I think the VB holds a spe special part of that Holden history. Yeah. It was the first of what, you know, the, the break away from, from the H series and- Yeah, the American. The American. To and Europe. That's right. Yeah. yeah, it was ba you know, predominantly based on European design. Mm. And uh, so it was the first of that sort of sharp edge, square, boxy shape mm. uh, that really flew on in the 80s. Mm. Um, so, you know, it was an interesting car for Holden. And it's remarkable, really. I mean, it's by far the longest running Holden model that was produced in Australia. I think people Commodores. just went- Commodores. Well, yeah, Commodore. Yeah. It, yeah. Just, it yeah. just went on and on and on for yeah. decades and people sort of look at that and say, well, they probably thought when it came out, it'd probably have a 10 or 15 year model cycle, but it's just been a phenomenon. 
It has, and, and look, I think we, you know that's why we're seeing people uh, now collecting the VVs again, and mm. it's uh, you know the the SLE is probably the the favoured model out of that, and oh, whether it's sure. a 4.2 V8 or mm. the five litre, the rear five litre. Mm. Um, but yeah, look, I in recent times we've seen them come through the auction and uh, they perform very well. Mm. Talk about a practical classic. I mean, wow, it's, it's just great. Uh, you know, you can put your family in there, there's heaps of spare parts, both panels and mechanical. Yep. I mean, you can't go wrong. It's probably what we call in our term an emerging classic. Emerging classic. Yeah, emerging yeah. classic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a very yeah. usable car. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, you can put five people in the car. Mm. Uh, it keeps up in today's traffic. Um, mm. Parts are readily available. It's got that beautiful radial tuned suspension, which still feels great today if you drive yep. one of those cars. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so really, a, a usable classic. Mm. Mm. Chris, the wagon didn't come out with the sedan. It came out a few months later in mm. mid nineteen seventy nine. It was a pretty unusual sort of a thing. Are they collectible? Do you think? Look, I think they are in their own right. Uh, we don't see too many of them. I think the survival mm. rate of the wagon is definitely a lot lower than the sedans. But they uh, certainly weren't popular with the fleets at the time because at the, the no. coil spring rear end and they were quite small. The Falcon yep, sort of had that market right. to itself. So I'm not sure, you know, what sort of demand there was for the wagon back then. I think it was probably more of a family wagon mm. uh, at the time, mm. uh, practical for a family to have. But um, you would rate the sedan more highly as a collectible I vehicle. I think today it is, you? yes, yeah. yes. But All if right. you find a very good wagon, probably a nice sure. by all means. Yep. Mm. Well, thank you very much indeed, Chris. And remember, you can find all the latest auction results on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like a memorable image of the VB Commodore in competition, visit autopix.com.au. John, it's amazing looking back at the VB Commodore. You know, it succeeded in planting a seed, I guess, for the, the generations of Commodore models to follow. But I tell you what, in those early days, they had some they had some real issues there with the build quality, didn't they? It was no. a rocky start, <laughs> Mark. I it was one close. of the very early build cars. It was supposed to be a sports pack. It was supposed it had the V8 engine and the manual transmission. It was supposed to have the cast alloy wheels, but they were all being used for SLEs. Mm. And that car of mine, everything went wrong with it you could imagine. It was a disaster. Mm. Many years later, I owned the same model, but a 79 model. Oh, so it had been built at a later date. Yes, yeah. a VBS. SLE, right. which was one of the best cars I've ever owned. And almost nothing went wrong with that, and the build quality was palpably better. So Holden was getting its act together, but they got off to a terrible start. It was pretty close. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed this look back at the pivotal VB Commodore, and we'll catch you next time on Shannon's Club TV. Yeah.